In today's episode of Building a Nation with Grasshoppers in Switzerland, we have got two massive, massive games. First of all, Bronby from Denmark in the Europa Conference League second knockout round, and then a huge league game against Basel. If we win, we go seven points clear at the top of the table. If we lose, that gap drops to just one solitary point. That's a very, very big game. In between episodes, we've only played two matches. We drew with Savet, with Nice Hefty scoring his first goal for the club, and then we put four past Winterthur, could be their name, not quite sure. We basically just comfortable victory with that one, and it was Sene, Koopman, and Han with the goals in this. Let's go and jump on a plane then, probably a plane, you'd assume a plane, over to Denmark. It's a long drive, Stuart, what are you talking about? We've got four away games in March, let's go. Much like last episode, we are still struggling quite quite badly when it comes to injuries and suspensions. We do pick up a lot of suspensions here in uh, Switzerland, or here at Grasshoppers at the very least. We've got a reasonable starting 11. Sene is going to be leading the line today, however, because basically we don't have an attacking midfielder, which is why Han is dropping into that position. Sene's up front, Corbino on the left. We should be good enough to do all right against Bromby. I'm not expecting a win, but if we can get ourselves a win... I'm not, it's not going to be a surprise, put it that way. 15 minutes on the clock and we've got the ball, but we are deep in our half at the moment. Hands collected, he's going for a run. Koopman to Theo Corbino. Now Sene, the lead striker, runs off towards the left-hand side. Back to Schmid, crosses it in. Pusic is there on the volley. It's a superb save from the keeper, but it is going to be a corner. Pusic is the man to go over to take it as well. Left-footed corner towards the back post. It's not a very good corner. It might have been a good corner, but it was trying to find Sané, who I don't think is the biggest of players. TC's going for a run. Recently signed for Blackpool on loan. Going for a long-range effort there. Well over the bar. And just a few minutes later, it is possibly Bromby coming forward. Alves Ibsen across to Maxo. Probably not pronounced Maxo. There's probably like a weird Max Show. I don't know. I'm not, from, I'm not from Denmark. I don't know if you've realised this. Koopman forward, finds Corbino. Loads and loads of space. He's going to go off towards the left. No, he doesn't. Plays in Sene on the ground. His shot is not the best. And it goes wide. We should have had a... I reckon we should be 1-0 up. Almost at half-time whistle. But there is potentially time for one more chance. Could go either way at the moment. With the ball in the middle of the pitch. It is Bromby Kearney. Hegheim. Forward, finds Joe Bell, who picked up a booking in the first minute of the match. Divkovic, left-hand side is Blas Riveros with loads and loads of space. Is he going to get the cross in? He does cross it in. It's managed to find its way to Divkovic, and Divkovic makes it 1-0. We should have stopped that one. And at half-time, then, it is 1-0 to Bromby. And I would argue that was against the run of play, but looking at match stats-wise, maybe not so much. We had a lot of, lot of shots, a lot of chances in the first half of the first half. But we didn't take any of them. Then Bromby came back in the second half of the first half. That's confusing. You've been unlucky so far. Was that the thing to say? We've got ourselves an early chance, possibly. It's Figueredo at the back post. And Figueredo scores. However, the flag's up. How are you offside from a free kick? What happened here? They, they stepped up. He stepped up at the last second. All three of our players were offside. It was a decent finish as well. Instead, Bromby possibly have themselves a chance. Thomas Ribeiro heads clear. Not the best clearance is coming straight back in. Bjork's there at the back post. Gelmi with a superb save. I don't think Sene's going to get on the end of that. No, he isn't. We are... I mean, we're not looking bad. Our strikers are not performing. That's part of the issue here. Sene loses out to the defender. And now Bromby again. All the way back to the keeper. I thought they would have gone the other way. Instead, it's with Hermansen. Goes for a big kick over the halfway line. Boller forward. Bjork collects, though, for Bromby. We're not keeping hold of the ball. We're just not keeping hold of it. And remember, this is a one-shot deal. If we lose this, we're out of Europe, which is kind of okay because I kind of want to focus on trying to win the league. But, you know, I also want to do well in Europe. That's the point of the save. That's a superb slide and block. Didn't really mean much because they've still scored from it. It's 2-0. Could it possibly be 3? Bromby again coming forward. I'm going to blame the playing away from home. We played at home against Hearts and beat them. We're playing away from home against Bromby and we're possibly going to be 3-0 down. We are 3-0 down. We've uh, we've just capitulated here. No, we haven't. Well, we, we kind of still have, but it's 2-0. It's not counted. Somebody was offside. Joe Bell with the ball back to Headland. Lots of space. I thought you might go for a shot instead. He's crossed it. Bjork this time heads over the bar. I think we should probably try and do some changes. Corbino's having a shocker. So we're going to move Sene back to left wing. I mean, because of these issues with our injuries, this man's on the bench. He's rubbish. 
We signed him from an unknown club. Do we do something with Marshall Rutty? Maybe that's what we go for. Maybe we do this, this, and then Marshall Rutty can come on on the right-hand side. We've basically rearranged all the poor performers and maybe hope that they're going to do better. Galbraith is going to come on as well for Sander Koopman. And we've still got one sub to do with 30 minutes to play. There's, I mean, it's not over yet, but time is going pretty quickly. And uh, Sene and Han still playing poorly. And uh, I think it's, it's basically over, isn't it? What do we do? We don't have a striker. We do have a left winger, technically, in the shape of Hefty. He's not a left winger. He's barely a left back. Well, we're going for it. That's all we can really do. We just have to rely on Han to do something. I'm going to give him a demand more. I'm going to move to positive. It's probably too little too late, but here we are. We have just been undone by more clinical finishing, really. We've had the chances. We've had 11 shots, 5 on target, scored none with an XG of 1.05, whereas Bromby have had the same amount of shots, roughly, and got two of their goals. Pusic with the ball for us. Gets some space for himself, goes for goal over the bar, and that is basically as good as we've got all season. All season? All game. We've done all right during the season. I don't know why I said all season. And there it is then. We are out of Europe. A 2-0 defeat in Denmark against Bromby. We should have got something. Looking at the match stats, you'd say that was maybe a 1-1 draw or a 2-2 draw. It's a 2-0 defeat. We just could not score the goals. And there's confirmation then being knocked out of Europe. Boller has picked up an injury, but he's only going to be out for one to two days. He should be back in time for the Basel match. If he wasn't, that would be a concern. We are still missing Aragoni, Sipot, Raffia, Saponjic, all missing. Campamba definitely missing as well. So it's only Bola who is likely, hopefully, to return for the Basel game. We've got some money, I guess. I assume all the teams now from Switzerland are out of Europe. This is going to be how many coefficient points we end at. Ten points. Ten whole points. So we've got no more in this episode. And that means we are going to go up to 14th, I assume. It does. We are going to 14th place unless any of these teams, which I severely doubt, are still in the competition. Maybe Poland, actually. They've done well. They've got some big numbers, but they still need to get up to 30. So they basically need to win the Europa League 2, Europa League or Champions League. We're probably starting next season in 14th place. But we've still got this season to worry about. Let's hopefully go and beat Basel. To add insult to injury, quite literally, we are now missing Ludovico Gelmi for two weeks because he's gone and got a cold. Which means Morea is going to be making just his second appearance for the season. His first one came in a Swiss Cup game. We are looking reasonably strong outside of our goalkeeper and our right back. Bola is fit. But he's not fit enough, which means we are playing Romagna as a right back. A position that he can't technically play, but he's good at football. So we're just going to have to go with it. We also have Hefty as our left back, who we know isn't very good either. Basel, we do know, are very good. One minute, 30 seconds on the clock. And already they are coming forward with a ball. Palacios to Lang. On the right is an option. It's gone backwards to May. Now Xhaka. I believe that's Toulon Xhaka. Xhaka again in the middle of the pitch. They are going to, I think they're just going to try and pass their way around us. That's a cracking ball. Liam Miller's in on goal. Morea makes a save. I don't know whether he needed to. Yes, he did. It's a corner that we are going to see as well. Palacios has gone over to take it towards the back post. Sene clears it. Not far enough. Nobody from our team on the outside of the box to pick up any loose balls. Palacios still trying to keep this one alive. Hefty with a push. It's not a penalty. It's a free kick. And we're seeing it as well. And Kasami's effort is saved. And we've managed to clear the ball. Morea, a 7.3 after about five minutes of football so far. Hefty with a throw for us. We need to somehow get this game under control. Koopman to Herc, through to Sene. Takes a few touches. And almost against his former employer, does he make it 1-0. Free kick for us in a good position. Pusic takes it. Back post is Figueredo. And Lindner comes out, holds on to that one. So what is this highlight? It's starting really with the goal kick or the kick out from the goalkeeper. Herc controls it just inside our half. Thomas Ribeiro to Hefty. Across to Al Albraith? Galbraith. Now Sander Koopman getting a rare run in the starting 11 recently because of those injuries. And it's all the way back to Lindner once again. What's this highlight? Drop it. Drop it at your feet. Pusic tackle him. Okay, fair enough. Big kick over the halfway line. Figueredo forward straight to a Basel shirt. Pelmard. Pelmard is a very, very good footballer. I was told before this match, keep an eye on him. He's a centre-back. He's not going to be doing a huge amount going forward. And this is where he probably scores. Liam Miller's in on goal again. And this time, the Canadian 
you can put it past the goalkeeper and it is 1-0 to Basel. And this lead of four points at the top of the table is going to drop to one point. We are not doing very well and it is 100% down to injuries. Romagna with a throw for us. 30 minutes still only played and we lost the ball straight away. Xhaka to Petrella. Petretta? Could have been Petretta. Not quite sure. The goal scorer Miller back to Petretta. And now Pelmard, is he going to go for a run and do something magical like the uh, news article told me he would do? Mai's going to go for a run instead. Fair enough. We need to steal this because I'm just concerned that they are just going to start turning it on. It's, I mean, I'm pretty sure we are well out of position there. Romagna, probably the man. Petrella, Petretta, whatever his name is. Miller, inside the penalty area. And of course Romagna's given away a penalty because we always seem to do that. Right, Morea, you're on a 7.1 at the moment. Can you save this? Put yourself on an 8.3. That's what we want to see. Kasami takes it, sends it into the bottom corner. It is 2-0 to Basel, and we are looking absolutely shocking. All of our more attacking players... What does that mean? Anxious. Anxious. I assume they're all looking anxious. I'm going to give them a shout. I'm going to fire them up. Don't look anxious. Look fired up. Is it helped? It kind of has. Still not quite at half time. And oh, I thought that was going to be Basel going through again. Instead, we've nicked this ball away. Patar Pusic goes for a little run. Cuts inside. Ball forward. Finds Sene. Controls it well. Takes a few touches. Forces a save out of Lindner. It is going to be a corner. I genuinely think that was our chance. If we scored that, we could have got back into this game. Koopman, who is playing absolutely appallingly on a 6.2. His corner isn't very good. Ribeiro collects it. The half time whistle goes. And we are in a bad, bad way. We are in a bad way. We're in the position in the position we deserve to be. The numbers prove that. Show me something. Yeah, that's it. Thrash arms. No, why can't I thrash arms and point finger? Sure, we'll do that. It's not really worked. Right, we're going in manually. We're going to talk to people individually. Keep it going. You've got the ability to make the difference. Frustrated. I'm furious with you. Demotivated. Right, you're coming off. Uh, let's talk to Sene. You've got the difference. I know you have. Herc. You've also got the difference. Keep it going. Romagna, keep it going. You've probably not got the difference to make the make it out there. But, you know, we need to do something. Right, Koopman is coming off. And again, I, we just don't have the subs. We literally don't have the sub options. So we're going to drop Han into that uh, attacking midfield position. They recommend bring on Dion Kukuri, who is an option, I guess. We're doing it. I can't believe we're doing that. In a game where we're 2-0 down and we need a goal, we're bringing on a player who literally has only ever played once for the first team off the bench. Morea with a goal kick for us. Five minutes then into the second half. Ribeiro. What are we going to do? Stand still, apparently. Now Herc across. Ethan Galbraith. Back to Figueiredo. Ribeiro. Do we look at bringing off Romagna and bringing on Bola? He is on the bench, but he doesn't have the fitness really. He shouldn't be playing. Pelmard. Across to Petretta, back to Pelmard. The fact that we started this highlight with the ball and that we are going to possibly end it without the ball is a bit of a concern. Lindner's kick over the halfway line. It's headed down. Jutkla could be his name. Petretta's going for a run on the left-hand side. Lots of space. Crosses it into Palacios. Has to go backwards to Xhaka. It is all Basel. It is all Basel and it is all a very big concern. And it is 3-0. This is where me, as a manager, I fall apart. I lit I don't know how to save this, so I'm just going to let the game play out and see what happens. Right, Romagna's picked up an injury as well, so that's another one for the list. So Bola is coming on. Han is on a 6-2. Sene's on a 6-2. Nefty's on a 6-2. We've obviously brought off Koopman, who was on a 6-2 as well. We've just been awful again. Lots and lots of subs there. So we brought on Corbino, Schmidt and Bola. We brought off Han, Sene and Romagna. We've got one more change that we could do, but we're 3-0 down. It literally isn't going to make a blind bit of difference at this point. Is it going to be 3-1? We've got 3 minutes and 10 seconds left of normal time. Is it going to be a consolation goal? It's Thomas Ribeiro. He's hit the bar. It's game over, everybody. We were never going to score. If there was ever a time to score, that was the one. And we've rattled the crossbar. So, we've had two matches in this episode, and we have been awful in both of them. That's a water bottle throwing. Of course you're demotivated. You were terrible. You should be demotivated. I don't understand why being demotivated is a bad thing. It's a bad thing to be demotivated. I don't want my players coming out of this meeting going, yeah, actually, yeah, it was a good performance, guys. I'm motivated for another one now. So Romagna's now out for six to nine days as well. So he joins that massive list of injuries, which is now, I mean, it's ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. What's going on? Medical Centre... 
we have got so many players who are high risk of injury as well. The current injuries, you can see at that injury history, we have been eight, eight injuries in January. Look at some of these injuries as well. They're not small injuries. We are, I mean, we've got five apparently. It says, I mean, we've got seven injuries. We have seven injuries in the league at the moment. That is the highest by a long distance, I imagine. Well, that also was our unbeaten run coming to an abrupt end as well, because that's normally how they end. They very rarely end with just like a 1-0 defeat. We've won 10, or not lost in 10, and then we lose against Basel in a game that we really should have won. And now we're going to get some money back from finding some of our players. One of the big problems that I think we've got is we have lost creativity. We don't have Rafia. Rafia has gone missing because of his injury. And we don't have anyone else who can do what he was doing. Pusic is he's a hot and cold player at the moment. Sometimes he's amazing. Sometimes he's pretty poor. In fact, when you look, Pusic hasn't scored a goal since... He hasn't scored a goal this calendar year. Are you joking? So yeah, we've got some players who should be doing better who aren't. So we're just going to go around and find a bunch of people. If I can remember where it is. Poor performance. Half a week, I think. Oh, it's still a week. It was bad. It was a bad game. We've managed to find three players and they've all accepted their finds. Maybe, maybe we should find some more. I want to have a look at the last five games. Who's playing badly? Han is playing horrendously badly. Cooperman is playing badly as well. We've got Herc not playing great. I mean, he's not doing too bad. 6.8 in his last five games. But yeah, I mean, we've just been poor. Particularly in this episode, we have been very, very poor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward to the other side of our next two games, which is Lugano and Zurich. And just kind of give you an update of where we are. Also, we might have a youth intake. So yeah, that could, might, it might happen in a minute. So we are the other side of the Lugano game. And this is ridiculous. He had to come off in that match because of an injury. He's broken his ankle. Petar Pusic has broken his ankle. Aragoni has a broken leg. We've also got Kelvin Campamba with a broken leg or a fractured leg. That's broken in my eyes. We, we are going through the worst injury crisis I have ever seen in Football Manager. And I'm not even... That's not hyperbole. That is true. I've never seen an injury crisis like this. Also, Matic managed to pick up an injury as well. Somebody else got a virus. Who was it? Ethan Galbraith. He managed to pick up the same virus as Gelmi. So that's two more players who have picked up another injury. And now Petar bloody Pusic has decided, I want to break my ankle. Great. The good news, however, is we did manage to win the game somehow. Han scoring a goal, Sene and Berhard Zimmerman as well scoring goals in this one. So we are back to winning way, still at the top of the table. And, oh my word, Basel drew with Winterthur. Oh my word, thank you very much. Right, we're going to go forward. We're going to play Zurich, who are in a relegation scrap. We should win that one as well. And the good news is we did beat Zurich in the Zurich derby, which means we are now six points clear at the top of the table as we enter into an international break. So we've now got, I think it's 15 days between now and our next match, which means hopefully we can get some players fit and back ready for action in time for the next match. We've won 3-0 twice on the spin somehow. Don't really know how we've managed to do that. When we return, we're going to have Lusanne next episode. I don't really know what we do. Do we do this? Do we do Basel? We have to, really. Next, let's be honest, next episode I don't know what's going to happen because basically we're going to come back for when the league title might be decided. It might be against Luzerne here. We don't know. Wait, sorry, outro Stuart. Um, I've gone forward a few days and bottom of the table Lugano have beaten Basel 3-1, which means 28 games played, six points clear at the top of the table. Back to outro Stuart. He doesn't know this yet. It's more likely going to be the Basel game. That could be the title decider. We also might have a Swiss Cup final in the next episode as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, I don't know why, because it wasn't a very good episode. Please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. And I'll be back with probably the final episode of Season 2 of Building a Nation with Switzerland. And yeah, could we be champions? Hopefully. Will we be champions? Probably not on today's performance. Thanks for watching.